Okay, so who wants a lesson in economics? Today is February 12th, 2020, and I want to talk about the minimum wage and what you can expect to see in our economy as the minimum wage uh, increases. Now, this is going to be about five or ten minutes of economics. Uh, I have a uh, bachelor's degree in economics from quite a few years ago and trained in this, so I should be able to competently explain four years of economics training in six minutes of a Facebook video. So here we go. So when you raise minimum wage up to $15 an hour, which is eventually where it's going to be, what you are going to do is you are going to affect 60% of all workers' uh, income, regardless of if you're at minimum wage or not. Because essentially what's going to happen is, is that as the minimum wage rises, the premium that places, like for instance, my law office pays. So my, my law office pays obviously more than minimum wage, so I pay a premium above minimum wage. That those workers uh, who are making what's called a premium wage, their wages will rise as well. So essentially we have um, the cashier at you know a convenience store who's making $7.25 an hour, her wage is going to increase by 100% to $15 an hour. Well, the people that work at my law office, who I might be paying uh, $15 an hour as well, uh, those wages are going to have to go up as well because those premium wages, will, you have to get paid more than minimum wage. So 60% of all of the workforce will wages will increase because minimum wage uh, has uh, risen. Now, the... Uh, the the break-even number of that in economics is somewhere around double minimum wage. So if you are making somewhere below $30 an hour, which is about $60,000 a year, you're going to see a the market adjust upward as the minimum wage uh, works in. So don't just kind of keep this in mind. Who is going to work at UPS making $15 an hour lifting heavy boxes when they can work at Wawa and be a cashier making the same wage. So UPS is gonna to have to pay more for their premium workers. I'm gonna to have to pay more as a lawyer for my, my legal staff. Uh, everybody's gonna to have to pay more. And so now for my legal staff, I'm not gonna fire anybody because I'm gonna to have to have these workers. But what you're going to see is what's called downward pressure on the lower end workers. And what's going to happen is, is as you walk into McDonald's already, you've probably started seeing the computers where you have to order from. And so what's going to happen is, is on the down workers, the people that are at the $7 an hour wage, as those people's wages increase, you're going to see more automation of those jobs. And so those computers cost money and all of that. Uh, and the the manufacturers, uh, the cost benefit isn't really there yet, but as wages start moving up, you'll see more computers automating. So what will happen is, is that the rule in economics is, is that for every 10% increase in minimum wage, you're going to have about 1% to 3% of unemployment on what are called the down workers. So with minimum wage going up 107%, you're looking at somewhere between 11 and 33% unemployment of what are called the down workers. Now, uh, for the down workers, for the cashier who will keep her job and be making $15 an hour, that's great. Her income has doubled uh, or, her, or his income has doubled. However, commodity prices will also increase. So we are looking at a, a jump from uh, $7 to $15, we are looking at probably around um, 20 to 25% inflation, meaning that goods and services are going to increase. So when you go to buy uh, your milk, and your milk is $5 a gallon, your milk should be maybe six fifty dollars a gallon or $7 a gallon. And that's inflation. Now, obviously, income and wages go into the cost of what goods sell for. So as wages go up and automation kicks in, there's still going to be, it's not dollar for dollar, but it's probably gonna be around 20 to 25% inflation as minimum wage goes up because minimum wage just doesn't affect the lower end workers. It affects 
all workers up to about $60,000. So everybody's going to make more and everything's going to cost more. So what you're going to see as a result of the minimum wage rising the way it is, is we're going to see inflation. That's an absolute. We're going to see loss of jobs and more automation. That's an absolute. And we're going to see prices uh, for all areas of, uh, of our uh, economy um, have to increase because the businesses will have to charge more for the goods and services they're selling. So that is economics. This is not something that hasn't happened in the past. Look at Puerto Rico in the 30s when they raised minimum wage. Uh, about 200,000 people lost their jobs. Uh, this is what happens when the market does not allow the economy to decide what, what wages should be. Today I drove by and there's a new grocery store that's opening up and it said starting salary $11 an hour. And so the, uh, the way that the equilibrium in the market right now is around 10 to $11 an hour. That's equilibrium. When when equilibrium is taken out of the equation and now we are rising the artificial level of wages for the minimum producers of society, then you are going to see inflation and you are going to see unemployment. Now, fortunately, this is just in Virginia and there are still a lot of people in North Carolina and Tennessee and all of that who will be working for lower wages and will still be able to buy their commodities. So it won't hit Virginia quite as hard until more states start following suit. But as the country starts, as a global uh, idea, starts raising the minimum wage up and everything starts costing more, it's going to uh, make it uh, to where these things will happen. Uh, the only other thing that we're going to see is because states like Tennessee and North Carolina and West Virginia will uh, be able to pay their wages, uh, their workers less, you might see some industry moving out of Virginia to the states where wages are less, uh, especially in industrial air, industrial types of ideas. So it could possibly be more of an exponential factor that we will lose um, industry to states that can pay wages less. So... Uh, for the Democrats, thanks for that one. Uh, looks like we're all going to make more, but we're all going to pay more, and people that we're trying to help the most are going to be hit the hardest. That's a lesson in economics in, ten, in less than 10 minutes. Attorney Tim Anderson on February 12, 2020.